RBA handing down its first interest rate decision of 2017, the first since U.S. President Donald Trump has taken office. So plenty for the board to be digesting as we speak. Let's go to the RBA headquarters. Carson Scott, Mark Bailey from FIG to walk us through what to expect. Carson. Nadine, you say finishing touches. I'm probably uh, of a mind to say they were quaffing their lunch uh, in the last few moments, not putting the finishing touches. Mark Bailey, that decision, let's face it, has been done and dusted as of earlier this morning. Uh, so you know, the niceties of it will be known very, very soon. 2.30 will be live on it. You had a veritable shopping list, though, of reasons why uh, they should go, but why are they hanging back and cutting? Look, I, I don't think they're going to cut, and, but I think the, the bias is certainly towards easing. I mean, if, you, if we deal with facts rather than the alternative facts that Trump loves to deal with, you know, you'd see the GDP print was weaker than expected, CPI was weaker than expected, uh, retail sales both November and December were weaker than expected. You've got the higher currency as well, obviously on the back of higher commodities, and also you've got banks increasing, mainly fixed, but investor loans out of cycle as well. So that is all kind of adding up to the bank may introduce an easing bias over the next few months. Probably not today, but I still think the next move is down rather than up from the RBA. And when are we like having to brace for that? I mean, realistically, they'll downgrade probably their growth forecast because of that CPI weakness in the September quarter you flagged. That's a Friday flagging uh, option for them in the statement of monetary policy. So when do they prepare the way for, for easing? Oh, look, I think, I think you're looking into the second quarter of this year, maybe third quarter, so June and, June and August, maybe, or May, maybe even May. But I think you're right in terms of the uh, uh, sump that we'll get on Friday. I think there will be a downgrade in terms of some of the forecasts. It'll be also interesting to see if there's a comment on inflation today. You know, it has been talking about that inflation has been low of recent, but we're still expecting to get back to trend. Now, that may, may actually change. What about the trade-weighted basket on the Australian dollar? Now, looking at that, and, and particularly against currencies like the yuan, you know, when you see those specific moves outside of the greenback, do you get a, a sense that we are not uh, importing inflation, uh, even care of China? Uh, that, that's not seemingly occurring. Oh, I don't think we're importing inflation, oh. especially, especially where the currency is at the moment. There's, there's, no, there's no real chance of that. Um, and so, you know, in, in terms of the cost pressures, you're not seeing anything coming through on the wages side of things. That is very, very weak as well. So there's, there's no pressure on that side. And I don't think we're, where the exchange rate is at the moment, you're going to see any pressure coming through from me. A lot of those measures, things even like the retail sales print, without getting kind of pernickety, but, you know, the new normal would be we're not going through the, the uh, department store turnstiles like we used to. A lot of it's online. It's not captured by the data. We're kind of scrambling for uh, signposts for signals that frankly aren't being picked up by the conventional uh, data analytics. Yeah, I mean, that's always a possibility now as the economy has changed, changed and moved to more digital and online. Are we capturing all that? But at the end of the day, we have to deal with the facts that are presented with us very similar to China and the, you know, the, the best indicators that we do have in terms of retail sales and CPI. And we can always debate whether it is capturing um, everything it should do. Statement of uh, monetary policies one thing, but also where the uh, the settings are from a macro prudential view, they could be set for review, what, in about a month's time or, or around about that time frame in terms of APRA's 2017 outlook. Will they be instructed on discussion with the Reserve Bank to maybe move lower on investor loans, so say a 7% line in the sand for a bank lending book to investors? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure whether they're going to be instructed, but obviously there should be some conversation between the, uh, the two institutions. Uh, in terms of, you know, their their guidelines going forward, I think they're going to want to keep it very conservative as it's the more global uh, regulatory background in terms of BAL 3 and then BAL 4. Um, so I think, you know, there's going to be a bit of caution there. And, and in terms of the investor loans, we've seen that across the curve in whichever area you want to look at, whether it's foreign investors or whether it's domestic investor only loans, everything has been tightened up in that side of things. The example of Vancouver is arguably instructive. Here we have an economy that's pegged to commodities, much like our own. There you have a foreign investor tax uh, on housing of 15 percent that's really taken the wind out of the sails. Can you foresee that that type of an additional impost comes into play here? Would that be perhaps another cushion, another insurance policy against overheating? It, it would be, but can I see that happening in Australia? Probably not. You know, I think the, the macro prudential regulations that they put in place in terms of trying to keep the heat down on the investor side of things is working and you've seen that in terms of the house price figures that are coming through in terms of the growth bond markets are pricing in you know what scenario for australia you talked about the banks moving out of cycle uh, is that essentially the trajectory that they are keying off 
uh, locally and uh, what does that spell more broadly for equities in that search for yield v growth yeah, I mean, if you look at the bond market and what, what's actually been priced in there, it is slightly lower in the next six months, but not, not a fully full cut priced in. And then towards the back end of this year in 2018, they're expecting rate hikes to come through. In terms of the, the equity market, what you're seeing as, you, as continually is at the moment, it's kind of very uncertain, un, unsure, you know, Trump's policies and what's happening in, in there. And, and that's flying through into U.S. equity volatility. And again, you know, making sure that people's asset classes are set and their portfolio mixes are set, maybe a bit more defensively than they have been historically mm -hmm. because of that uncertainty and extra volatility that's likely to come through this year. And it's interesting that Macquarie, in light of all of that, is neutral on banks. At best, it says Westpac and the NAB if you want some upside, but you know, as we've seen from even yesterday, the end of that bad, the, the, the bottom of the bad debt cycle is probably, uh, of the impaired loans rather, is, is, is probably past us now, is it not? Yeah, look, I mean, the NAB results were fairly soft, I think, in terms of overall. But it's specifically, I, I, I always look at the bad debts and um, bad loans. They actually fell by 23%, so I think it was around about 164 million. So that, that was actually a pretty good figure in terms of the overall health of the economy as the banks are seeing it in terms of, you know, uh, potential defaults and arrears on mortgages and all also on their corporate loan book as well. So maybe we haven't quite seen... We're getting close to the bottom, absolutely, but I don't. maybe maybe we've still got a few more quarters of, of good times ahead of us. And the fact that the banks haven't held on to gains today, they haven't used that as some kind of a springboard to the next level, is telling, is it not? Just in terms of a broader wealth effect view on where Australian investors are going to derive their profits from. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the banking sector has had a good run of late, and obviously it's, it's pulled back. You know, there's probably a bit of um, understanding of what's going to happen in the States with the Dodd-Frank and how that's going to impact more, more broadly globally. Um, but, you know, in terms of investors chasing yield, it's, it's a very difficult dilemma because there's a lot of volatility out there. And, you know, not talking my own book, but I would say that bonds should be a bigger part of their portfolio. Mark, we will uh, reconvene in a month's time for now. Many thanks. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate it. There we have the decision is pending. The rain is falling. We are for now relatively dry. We're uh, joining the homeless uh, undercover today. It's a telling kind of juxtaposition, Nadine, uh, with that building there, the austerity and the relative warmth and succor that they find upstairs in their subsidized uh, tea rooms. And down here, where you've got the waifs, the strays, and the uh, un unmentionables essentially uh, trying to find some warmth in this uh, important day for markets. Talk to you soon.